tonight. All right. God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this day that you've allowed us to see how you kept us throughout the day. You brought us into this present moment. And for that, God, we say thank you. God, we thank you for this time that you are going to allow us to spend together in your word. God, we pray now that you would, uh, anoint our ears to hear. Oh God, God, I pray that you would anoint my mouth to speak those things that you would have me to speak on tonight. Father, we thank you for there being a deposit, oh God. Father, we thank you that your word tonight will be real. God, we thank you that it will be relevant and it will be, uh, we will, something will be revealed to us, oh God. We thank you for revelation coming to us individually and corporately on tonight. Father, we pray that each and every person that hears this word, God, it will be deposited, planted, and God, we will not just hold on to it, but we will allow it to be executed in our lives. Father, for that tonight, we say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. All right, amen. So thank you again for joining us on behalf of Bishop Daryl J. McClary Sr. and Pastor Jessica T. McClary we welcome you. All right. And just go ahead and uh, ask somebody to join you in the cyber Bible study in the cyber sanctuary tonight as we dig into God's word. We know that to the year 2023 has been coined our time to flourish. All right. We are in a time of life that God is allowing us to develop, to, uh, to grow, to mature, to um, see an abundance. Amen. So we are excited about this season and this time that God is allowing us to flourish. And so uh, we've been teaching and talking about what God has been saying to us individually. Um, all of the ministers and elders that have come before you, we have been tasked with hearing God and seeing what it is that he has to say to us. And then we're sharing that with you. All right. So tonight I would like to share with you um, a topic of preparing for full bloom. All right. We are ready to prepare for full bloom. All right. What does that mean? What does it mean to be in full bloom? Though some of you may be into uh, gardening. And when you think about the term full bloom, something is well developed, all right? It has been completely developed. It has reached the stage of its fullest maturity, all right? And usually when we see flowers or plants that are in full bloom, they are covered with flowers, all right? They are plants that have been covered with flowers. That's how we know that something has uh, been or is in a state of full bloom. All right. The flowers are fully open. All right. So if you've ever um, received a bouquet of flowers or a vase of flowers, usually some, uh, let's say maybe tulips, they are very closed when you get them. All right. They are closed. But by the time they have made it to full bloom, they are fully open. All right. They may have been closed and you couldn't really see the stem on the inside. But once it is in full bloom, that means it has had it has time to develop. It has had time to mature. All right. So we need to prepare in this season to be in a full bloom um, state. All right. So uh, that took me to Genesis chapter 40, verse 9 through 10 is where we're going to start tonight. All right. Genesis 40. Chapter 40, verses 9 through 10. And I am going to read that for you out of the, the NIV, the New International Version. All right. Uh, Genesis 40, verse 9 says, So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream. He said to him, In my dream, I saw a vine in front of me. Verse 10, And on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed and its clusters ripened into grapes. All right. 
So that kind of walks us through. It gives us a process of um, the process of coming to a point of being in full bloom. All right. And it's talking about grapes here. So, of course, you know, we started out or it talks about the vine. So in this in this account, Joseph was thrown into jail and he was there with the cupbearer and the baker. But we want to focus on the cupbearer. You know, Joseph had to interpret their dreams. So the cupbearer had a dream. And in this dream, he saw before him a vine. And on that vine were three branches. All right. And so when we think about it, when I, as I started studying, um, I started looking up uh, vines and as it related to grapes, okay? So I started looking at the grape vine and how it actually starts out. It starts out as just a plain, um, basically a branch, a thick, strong branch, but it was very, it's very dry in its beginning state, all right? So how many of us, even in our lives, if we look at it from a spiritual standpoint, there are times or when we before we became uh, Christians, before we gave our life to Christ, really, we were dead to him. All right. Our life was not um, alive in Christ. Like we did not have a life in Christ. We had a life where we were probably um, we, we were a slave to sin. All right. So basically we were in a state of deadness. All right. But when we chose to accept Christ and we began to uh, allow the, his, his, um, his spirit to live in us, it was like a coming alive. All right. So let's look at the branch or the vine, the grape vine, the vine as a dead piece of wood at the beginning stages. And even sometimes, even after we begin our walk with him, we get to places in our life where we feel just dead, just kind of lifeless. Amen. But we're going to talk about how we get to that place of budding or that place of being in full bloom. All right. But the key to it all is the vine. All right. So in this dream, the, the butler or the cupbearer, he saw the vine. But on the vine, he saw branches. All right. So then that brings me to where? How many of you can think of where I'm going? I am the true vine. If it takes me to John chapter 15, verses one through seven. But when we think about the vine, the vine is the source and the sustenance of life for the branches. So the branches cannot live outside of the vine. Even though the vine may look dead, the vine may look dry before it begins to the process of going into full bloom. It may look that way, but there is really something happening. There is a the vine is really the source. So the vine being rooted and grounded in good soil, it's getting all that it needs. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. All right. It doesn't matter what it looks like to the naked eye, but because it is rooted and grounded in good soil, everything that it needs to bring forth branches is taking place on the inside. All right. So everything that we need in order to grow, to be fruitful, to get to that place of being becoming in full bloom or be, really seeing uh, what we are supposed to see in this time of flourishing, we've got to be rooted. All right. In John 15, one through seven, verse one says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Verse two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So one of the first things that we've got to recognize is that Jesus is the true vine and God is the husbandman. What is a husbandman? All right. What is that? A husbandman is the one who will actually plow and cultivate the land. All right. So in order for the vine to be um, 
to have the what it needs in order to grow, in order to be able to sustain the branches that grow from it, it has to have a good husbandman. It has to have someone who's going to plow and cultivate and make the soil what it needs to be. It, that person has to fertilize the soil so that the, the land is good for producing what needs to be produced. So God is the husbandman. He is the one that is going to cultivate us, all right? And when I think about the cultivation that's needed, it's, the, it's a heart thing. We've got to allow God to cultivate our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to allow him to cultivate our hearts because our hearts, hallelujah, that's the place where, where things happen in our heart. Out of the mouth flows the abundance of the heart. So a lot of us, we've got to pay, we got to start paying more attention to what comes out of our mouths and what comes out of your mouth really is the result of what's in our hearts. All right. So in order for us to get to a place of flourishing and we get to a place of a full bloom, we've got to work on our heart. We've got to understand what's in our heart. Some of us have to start dealing with some of the things that are in our hearts. All right. There are a lot of times there are issues in life, but a lot of times it starts with the heart. Do we have any heart issues? But verse number three, well, let me go back. Um, verse one tells us that Jesus said, he is the true vine. My father is the husband and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take away. So it is our job as branches connected to the vine that we've got to bring forth fruit because it's not until the fruit doesn't come from the vine itself, but the fruit will grow on the branches that come out of the vine. So we've got to be in the vine in order for us to grow and bear fruit. So the very first thing that I need you to know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm about to get ahead of myself, but let me go ahead and read verses three and four. Three says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Four is abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except ye abide in me, which is what I just said. We've got to, we can't, the, the vine can't produce the fruit, but the branch is coming out of the vine and then the fruit are gonna grow on those branches. But one thing we have to do in order to get to the place or to prepare ourselves for full bloom is we've got to abide and abode. So we have to abide and we have to allow Christ to abode. So what does it mean to abide? Abide really means to, to remain, all right, to continue, to stay, all right? The Greek word for uh, abide or remain for abide is meno, all right, which means to stay, remain in him, all right? Not only when it's convenient, because that's what we get tripped up a lot of times. All right. We get tripped up with saying, uh-uh, I can't, I can't do it. I can't live this life every day, every minute, every second of the day. I can't, you know, I'm not perfect. No, we are not perfect. But if we abide in him, means if we stay in him, if we continue to walk with him, if we continue to walk according to his way, according to his statutes, if we continue, if we make up our minds that we're going to stay in him and allow him to stay in us, because to abode means a place where one lives. So will we be the place that we allow him to live? All right. So it's a two part thing. We've got to abide in him and he's got to abide in us. All right. So the uh, to abode means there is a place where one abides. So we are the place where he abides. Are you going to present your body as a living sacrifice? If you go over to Romans chapter 12, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present ourselves, our bodies a living sacrifice, holy 
acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Can we talk about reasonable service? When something is reasonable, it's easy to do. When something is reasonable, you can accept it pretty well. Let me think about something. I thought about reasonable. We will pay a reasonable price for something. When we think that it's affordable, when we think that um, it's of good quality, we won't mind spending the money or doing whatever it takes in order to obtain it. So presenting our bodies is a reasonable service unto the Lord. Being holy and acceptable unto him, that's reasonable. That's not something hard. I know you said, yes, it is. Because when somebody comes at me the wrong way, I want to go off on them. I want to give them a piece of my mind. I want to do this. I want to do that. But what our reasonable service is, is to remain in him and allow our bodies to be a living sacrifice so that he can abode there. All right. So that he can abide in us. So it's not just about us abiding in him, because when we say that we abide in him, we are followers of Christ, but something comes up and it makes us want to flip. It makes us want to turn and do something that will please our flesh. All right. That I, I want to question whether or not we are truly abiding in him and allowing him to abide in us. All right. Because when when certain uh, people just say you had a guest and there are certain things that you won't do when you have guests in your house. All right. So when when we allow him to really abide in us, there are some things that we just will not do when it comes to this body and allowing it to be a living sacrifice. All right. So there are some things that we have got to cut off before we get to the place of not being able to bear fruit. All right. So one of the reasons we are not able to bear fruit is because we're not really abiding and allowing him to abode. All right. Does that make sense? Anybody, does that make sense to anybody? Because verse two in John chapter 15, verse two says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he's going to take it away. All right. So in order for us to prepare for full bloom, we've got to make sure that we are abiding. All right. We have got to make sure that we are staying with Christ, that we are, um, we are, allowing our bodies to be the living sacrifice. We've got to allow our mouths to be the living sacrifice. We've got to allow our eyes to be a living sacrifice. Our ears, our feet, every part of our being has to be given unto him. All right. We've got to abide and we've got to allow him to abode. So this is the place. This is the place that he has got to reside in order for us to be able to um, bear fruit, okay? In order for us to be strong enough to withstand the, the wiles, the tricks, the, tr the traps, and the schemes of the enemy, we got to abide. And abiding means staying no matter what. Even in adversity, we've got to stay. Even when we want to say something, we got to stay with Christ, amen? We've got to, um, we've got to, sh we've got to show the people in the world, those that are not um, yet living for him, those that have not yet uh, chosen to follow Christ. We've got to be the example and we can't be the example when we don't abide. We can't be the example flying off the handle. We can't be the example when we give in to our flesh. We can't be the example when we're acting like the world because the Bible tells us that we can't be, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. There should be a difference. And in order for us to prepare to be in full bloom, for us to flourish uh, at the fully developed place, we've got to remain in him. All right. We've got to. All right. Uh, verse. Let's see. Let's go down to verse five of John 15. Verse five says, I am the vine. 
ye are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So we can't be the example if we don't stay in him. We can't show that um, we don't have to fly off. We don't have to cuss everybody out. We ain't got to fight everybody that rubs us the wrong way. We don't have to do it that way. Because as once we begin to truly abide in him and truly allow him to abide in us, then we will be, everything won't rub us the wrong way. Everything won't require us to snap back, all right? Everything will not rub us the wrong way. We, we every, every piece of bad news that comes will not allow us, will not cause us to fall or faint or, or um, be wavering in our faith up and down, up and down, to the left, to the right. You know, one day we want to walk with Christ. The next day, I don't know if I can do this thing. Come on. If we are preparing to be in full bloom, the more we abide in him and the more he abides in us, it becomes easier. All right. The walk becomes easier. The enemy, yes, will try to bring things to frustrate us, to agitate us. But we've got to get to the place in him that we recognize that all things work together for the good, all right? All things work together. It may not look good. It may not feel good. It may not line up with the way you thought it was gonna happen or the way you desired for it to happen, but all things work together, all right? And you can always walk in such a way that you will remain positive no matter what the situation, no matter what has been thrown your way. We can walk, we can walk this thing out. Amen. We can be the example. All right. We can bear much fruit. But guess what? Verse six says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as branch, as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned, done away with. All right. So either we're going to walk with them or we not. What you going to do? Either you're going to walk with him or you're not. It's time out for back and forth. It's time out for um, wanting to do it your way one day and then wanting to do it his way another day. We we can't do that. All right. We have we got to remain. We have to stay in the place that he has called us to. It means continuing for a long time and not changing. That's what abide means, to continue for a long time and not change. But we find ourselves changing. Amen? We find ourselves in and out, back and forth, playing double dutch. All right? But we have got to remain. We got to be steady. We got to be stable. All right? We got to stay with him. All right? And what did I say? Not just when it's convenient. All right. It can some days is easy, but on the hard days, on the days that you don't feel like it, on the days when you wake up and you don't, I don't even know why I feel like this. But some of us, we we like that feeling. We want to stay in that place, but we will not abide or get the word in us, get worship in us and and step over that thing. A lot of us like to sit in that thing. All right. But I can't pull myself out of it. Well, get you a word. Pull on the spirit of the, pull on the spirit. Pull on God and say, God, get me out of this place. All right? Bring me back to a place of, of peace. Bring me back to a place of, of, of happiness. Bring me back, God, to a place of, of, of recognizing that you are in this situation, that you are in control of the situation. It may not have gone the way that I wanted it to go, but God, bring me up out of this, 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 this feeling, this slump. Bring me up out of this. And a lot of us, be honest, sometimes we want to stay in that place of feeling however we want to feel. Like anybody come your way, this ain't the day. I ain't got time for it. If they come to me with this today, then th this is what I'm going to say. Mm-mm. Because if, if we are abiding in him, 
we have got to bear fruit every day, all day. We don't know when an opportunity will present itself because even in this time of flourishing, it's not just about flourishing in material things, but we have a responsibility. We all have a general call. We've got a call to, to grow the kingdom, all right? To be witnesses unto him wherever we go. So even when we're in a funk, even when we're feeling how we feel, and we got to get up out of that thing because we don't know who we are supposed to encounter on in that day. We don't know when God is going to need have need of us. Amen. So that's why we've got to always abide. We've got to always abide in him and allow him to abide in us. All right. So, um, so if we don't, he's going to cast us out. He's going to cast the branch. The branches are going to be um, thrown away. And I, I looked at a time lapse of um, grapevines growing. So I want you, when you get some time, I want you to search on YouTube, um, grapevine time lapse, okay? Grapevine time lapse. And it will actually, what it is, is um, it's a, a camera set up in a vineyard of grapes. And it begins at the beginning of the season where you see what I was talking about, the dead looking branch that is, the, and it's, it's a lot of them. They are there looking like nothing is going on. But it, one thing I did notice that the, um, the ground was well prepared. I mean, everything was in order. And that's what the husband and husband man does. He makes sure that the ground is prepared to produce. All right. So as long as we allow God to cultivate us, to cultivate our hearts, all right, for us to let go of some stuff that we may have been holding on to, we allow God to cultivate our hearts and prepare us for growth. All right. But when you go and you look at that time lapse, so the, the camera is set up so that it is there the entire season from the dead looking branch or the dead looking vine all the way through the growth and the development, the full bloom of the grapes. And during that time, you will see how the branches grew out. And then after the branches grew out, you begin to see the leaves growing on the branches. All right. And after that, you see um, bundles of grapes that are growing. And I mean, actually, what you don't see, hallelujah, thank you, God. What you don't see in this time lapse video is someone going to tend to the vines. They are just growing. They are doing what they need to do. Because if they've been planted in the right place, once they've been planted, and cultivate it. The soil has to be plowed first. The, the ground has to be prepared first. Then the seeds or the vines are, they dro are dropped in. And so we see the, the point of the, the vines without any branches, without any leaves, without any grapes. But you see the process of the full bloom taking place. And so once we are planted, once we are abiding in him and he is abiding in us, we begin to see fruit. But guess what? There is a process where if fruit are, if the branches are not producing fruit, they fall off. But there are, there is also a process of pruning where even the branches that are growing fruit, it has to be trimmed. It has to be pruned in such a way that that branch will bear even more fruit. But even as we are walking with Christ, there are things that will come along and they will, God will need to uh, cut some things away. He will need to do some, uh, some pruning and some, some prepping and some restructuring of some things. Even though we are producing fruit, 
but he's still got to do some cutting and trimming of some things away from us so that we can bear more fruit. All right. So even there are things that we go through and it's just a pruning. All right. It's just a pruning. God is not throwing us away. We are producing, but even as in us producing, there's a, a another level of maturity. There are some things that he needs to, to cultivate even the more so that we can bear more fruit. All right. Because a lot of times we forget about the fact that it is our job to uh, to be disciples. All right. To be an, an example, to draw people into the kingdom. And in order for us to do that, God has to do some work on us, even the more. All right. Sometimes there are some things that he's got to cut away. All right. So that we can bear more fruit. All right. I hope this is making sense for you on tonight. And I am almost done. But verse seven says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. If we abide in him and his word abides in us, we can ask what we will and it shall be done unto us. That's where the, um, I'm not saying that it's not about um, us prospering in such a way that God will bless us with things because he will bless us with things. Although we still, we should not allow, uh, we should not lose focus on being that we will, we are to be disciples, that we are supposed to draw people to the kingdom. And the added benefit is that if we abide in him and his word abides in us, we can ask what we will and he'll give it to us. There are some things that we, we can pray and ask God for those, for things and they will be given to us, but we got to make sure we're abiding. All right. We got to make sure that we are abiding. And so the asking what we will, and it shall be done unto us, took me to John chapter 14, verses 13 through 17. All right. John 14, verses 13 through 17. And it says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But it, all, it comes from abiding, all right? In order for us to prepare for full bloom, I'm telling you, abiding is the key. We have got to abide in him. We've got to stay in him. And not only do we have to abide and allow Christ to abode, but we have got to allow the husbandman access, all right? And once we allow the husbandman access, meaning we allow God to cultivate our heart, cultivate our mind, cultivate our actions, cult everything that we do has to line up with him and his will for our lives. We gotta allow God to prune us. We gotta allow him to shake some things out of us. We gotta allow him to um to make us to look like him even the more all right once we allow the husbandman access we then got to listen to the horticulturalist and i'm going i'm going i'm going to tell you about that in a little bit but um we as as we abide then we can ask as we abide then we can ask Verse 14 in John 14, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. That's the second time he said it. So the first time he said it, we see it in John 14. We saw it again in John 15. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you abide in him and he abides in you, you can ask and he will do it. Verse 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's a part of that heart thing. That's a part of the cultivating, allowing the husband man to do what he needs to do in you so that you will continue to keep his commandments. Verse 16 says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the 
the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwell with you. I mean, he, he lives with you. He abides with you and he shall be in you. In order for us to get to the place of being in full bloom, we have got to one, we have to abide and we have to allow Christ to abode. Two, we have to allow the husbandman access, access to cultivate and to plow us, all right? And the third thing is we've got to listen to the horticulturalist. Let me tell you what a horticulturalist is, all right? That is one who is um, responsible for increasing the yield, improving vigor, size, and taste of plants. So a horticulturalist has studied what is necessary in order for a plant to grow in size, in order for, uh, let's go back to the, to the budding of the grapes. It is, it is, the horticulturalist studies the, the ground, the soil, what needs to be done, how long, all of these things, but they specialize in knowing what's needed in order to get the best out of it. All right. The horticulturalist is the Holy Ghost. In our lives, we have to allow the Holy Ghost to tell us what to do. We've got to allow the Holy Ghost to be our guide. We've got to allow the Holy Ghost to provide instructions. Amen. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it in our flesh. We've got to rely on the spirit of God to be our guide, to be our horticulturalist so that we can prepare for this season of flourishing so that we can come into a full bloom. All right. We want to be well developed. We want to be um, fully matured. We want to be uh, in such a place that we will bear much fruit. All right. We've got to be in a place that we are bearing much fruit, that we are producing in the kingdom. Amen. That we're just not sitting back doing nothing, that we are not just sitting back to where God is saying, if you don't want to do anything, I can't do anything with you. We don't want to be the branch that is that falls off of the vine because there are branches that just fall off themselves because they're not producing anything. All right. But we want to be the branches that produce much fruit. And in order for us to produce much fruit, we have got to be, uh, we've got to allow the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got to allow the spirit to speak to us. We, and not just speak to us, we've got to listen. All right. Because the Holy Spirit is the expert. A horticulturalist is the expert. And the horticulturalist works along with the husbandman, works along with the farmer. Because in our terms today, a husband would be a farmer, one who actually works the ground. All right. One who actually cultivates and and plants the, 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 the seeds in the ground. And the horticulturalist says, OK, now that you have planted the seed, I need you to do this. This is how I need you to um, provide additional nutrients to the soil so that these vines can grow to be uh, strong, that these vines will produce branches that will not just fall off, that will actually produce fruit. So we have got to listen to the experts, which is the, whole the horticulturalist is the expert. The Holy Ghost is the expert. The Holy Ghost knows what we need to do. The Holy Ghost knows when you need to speak. The Holy Ghost knows when you need to be quiet. So we have got to listen because the horticulturalist works alongside the husbandman, all right? And the horticulturalist will provide guidance, insight. It will inspect and identify issues. We got to allow the Holy Spirit to say, hey, uh-uh, stop doing this. This is not going to produce fruit. This is not going to produce the fruit that I need you to produce, all right? So we have got to be willing to listen to the expert, we gotta be be a, be willing to listen to the Holy Spirit in this season as we are preparing for full bloom, amen. Because we want, eat, w there are times that God has got to prune us. We don't want to be pruned, but we've got to be pruned. All right. So in this season, in preparing for full bloom, we have to abide 
and allow Christ to abode. We've got to allow the husbandmen access and we've got to listen to the horticulturist who is the Holy Spirit, all right? Those are the things that we need to focus on as we prepare for full bloom, all right? Because if this is our time to flourish, we want to flourish in every area of our lives. And in order for us to do that, we got to abide. We got to stay. Amen. We've got to stay with him. We've got to allow him to stay with us. There's no putting Jesus on the shelf. There's no, I'm going to put him over here. I'm going to go do what I need to do, want to do, feel like I'm big and bad enough to do, and then I'll come back. No, 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 no. That is not the season for this. That time of life is gone because this is the time for us to flourish. And in order for us to flourish, we've got to stay. We've got to remain. We've got to abide in him and he's got to abide in us. All right. I pray that you have gotten something out of this word tonight. Amen. I know I was a little all over the place with our scriptures, but I want to make sure that we understand that we've got to abide. And as we abide in him and he abides in us, there are some things that we can ask of him and he will do it. That's a guarantee. There are some things that we can ask as long as we are abiding and we are allowing him to abode, we are making this temple a place where he can reside. And it is, um, that's our reasonable service, y'all. It's just reasonable. It makes sense. All right. It's not costing you a lot because it's reasonable. Oh, I can do this. This is reasonable. It's not hard. Allowing our bodies to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. That just means we set apart. We are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Let's act like it. And the more we act like it, the more we will draw all men unto him because they are going to see him in us. Amen. It's not going to be our flesh on display. It's not going to be our attitudes on display, but it's going to be the love of God. It's going to be the peace of God. We're going to know how to talk to people. We're going to be gentle. We're going to have patience. Amen. Those are the things we sometimes want to run past and not focus on. But as long as we're abiding in him, it's going to be easy. All right. And we are going to be in full bloom in this time of flourishing. All right. So I'm going to pray. And we, um, we're praying for full bloom. Amen. We're, playing, we're praying for flowers all over the place. We're, we're praying for development all over the place in every area of our lives, all right? Father God, as we come tonight, we say thank you for this time that you have allowed us to spend together. God, we thank you for your word. God, we pray that your word will be rooted and grounded in our hearts. So God, we thank you, hallelujah, that this word has fallen on good ground tonight. God, we pray that you would help us to prepare for this season of flourishing so that we can be in full bloom, oh God, that we can be well-developed, that we can be completely developed, that every flower, hallelujah, for every fruit, oh God, it will grow in abundance, oh God. I thank you that we will be able to draw people to the kingdom, oh God, as a result of them seeing how much we abide in you and you abiding us. God, we just say thank you tonight. Father, we love you. We ask that you would just continue to be with us. God, I thank you that this word will challenge us, oh God, that we will look at our lives, oh God. We will listen to the Holy Spirit as he directs us, as he guides us, as he inspects us. God, I thank you, hallelujah, for bringing about change in our lives. Father, we love you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. We say amen and amen. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We love you and we look forward to seeing you the next time. Go for flourish, prepare for full bloom, abide, abide, abide. All right. Love you all and have a great evening.